Hi, I'm Bill O'Reilly reporting tonight from Washington, D.C. Thanks for watching us. A close encounter with an Occupy protester. That is the subject of this evening's Talking Points memo. Last night I was walking over to the White House for the annual media party there. All of a sudden, some guy runs up behind me, screaming, comes out of the rain, doesn't identify himself. I was with my assistant from Fox News, and we were startled. I told the guy to get lost, but he came closer and closer, armed with a cell phone camera. When he was about a foot away, I turned and shielded myself and my assistant with an umbrella. At this point, we were just a few feet away from the White House gate. The Secret Service stopped the man, and we find out that he's an Occupy protester. I then asked the service to call the D.C. police because I thought the guy was out of control. The police arrive. Discussions take place. But there's no criminal statute in Washington unless a person actually touches you, which the guy did not. Now, this man could have had a knife. I didn't know what he was going to do. I didn't know who he was. But in the District of Columbia, I couldn't stop him. I mean, I felt like the penguin in the Batman show. Remember that, Burgess Meredith? Shielding myself with an umbrella. And I'm lucky I had it. Otherwise, I might have punched the guy. You know, I would have been arrested. Ironically, a few nights ago, I told you bad things were going to happen because these Occupy protesters are becoming increasingly aggressive. But I never thought it was going to happen to me. However, these anarchists are now everywhere. Here's what happened to Chris Christie yesterday. Good shot! <laughs> oh, yeah. You're so angry, aren't you? So angry. So terrible. Hey, listen. You know what? We're used to dealing with jokers like this in New Jersey all the time. Don't you worry about it. But we do have to worry about it because some of these people are now intruding on businesses and individual American citizens. I was lucky last night. I held my temper. I'm sure the guy wanted me to hit him. The thing is, if the occupier had identified himself, I would have talked to him. In fact, I put him on the factor. But running at somebody in the dark, screaming, is, in my opinion, a threatening situation, and there ought to be a law. And that's a memo. Now for the top story tonight. Why isn't there a law? With us, former Washington, D.C. detective Trevor Hewick, who is now a private investigator. Uh, you worked in the district here a long time. Okay. 92 years. Right. And, and what bothers me about this is that we research all over the place, not just Washington. And it looks to me like people don't have any protection when people come at them, and you don't know who they are. And, and I'm thinking John Lennon here, you know, poor John Lennon signing an autograph, and all of a sudden he's dead. So did I do the right thing last night, or how do you see it? Well, you did the right thing. I, I mean, I did see some aspect of the video. Yeah, there is a video which say it's edited, and it's around on the website, so whatever. But uh, the police misinterpreted the law because you don't have to have a physical contact or injury to arrest somebody for simple assault. There's an aspect of battery in simple assault and there's an aspect of a threatening act, an unwanted touching, and you don't have to have an injury. A, uh, a, a, a threatening act could be frightening an individual. And I, I just... Well, i got to be honest. I mean, the, the guy... Uh, once I saw who he was, that, that he was some crazy guy asking me crazy questions about Newt Gingrich, I don't know what he's talking about. And he had a little cell phone. I wasn't frightened. I have to admit, I wasn't frightened. It was in the beginning, which you don't see on the tape because they don't put that on there, where he's screaming and running out. I don't know who he was. Um, but the lieutenant, and I talked to a lieutenant in Washington, D.C., he didn't want any part of this case. It was a low level beef to him. I'm sure they're busy with homicides and everything else around. He, he really didn't want any part of it. Listen. They're not all doing homicides, all right? You should have dealt with this correctly. What would you have done if you were the officer on the scene? I'd arrested the man for a simple assault. Really? Because I, I see this as a threatening act. Based on what you saw on the tape? Based on what I saw on the tape, because you could hear him, you could see him running up, because the video is showing the individual running up behind you. You're trying to avoid the individual. Absolutely. You're in the company with somebody. You're not only thinking of your safety, you have to think of the safety of the individual you're with. Yeah, she's 5'2". You don't know this individual that's approaching you. He doesn't identify himself by name. He's yelling out questions and whatever else he may have you know, yelled out at you. But the whole idea is that he's approaching you improperly. And you go to the reasonable standard, and I, and I don't think he makes this reasonable standard. It's like if you'd have said his name, I think yeah, you would have... If I knew, look, I'm an Occupy protester, here's my name, I would have said, okay, what's your question? 
Um, but anyway, well, we do this, and I'm sure you know this. We send out Jesse Water and other producers to ask people news questions. But the rules are, we identify ourselves, this is who we are, we have a logo on the microphone, we do it in daylight, and I can't even remember any, ever a nighttime situation, and if they say, back off, as I did to this guy, all right, we back off, unless it's a, a situation where there's a, a criminal or something like that, but if it's a regular citizen, I mean, you can't. But I, I'm very interested, why do you think that the lieutenant didn't want anything to do with this thing? Maybe uh, he was trying to be politically correct, and he didn't want to call the supervisor. I'm surprised he didn't call the watch commander over that night to make the decision. Yeah, because he, the head of the Secret Service in the White House came up to me at the party and said, you know, my guys told me what happened. Because they saw it. Okay, the Secret Service saw it. That's why they, they kept the guy there. Uh, when, because it took the police about 10 minutes to get there. Um, and he said, look, you know, this is inappropriate. You can't have this kind of stuff. But service didn't have jurisdiction. You have to be on the White House grounds for the service to have jurisdiction. That would have been a federal beef. But I guess it's still a federal beef because it's in the district, right? Yeah. It can be taken to federal court, yes. Right. But I, you know what? I'm, I, I don't, in hindsight, I, I was annoyed by then. I don't want the guy arrested. That would make me look like a bully and an idiot, wouldn't it? No. Listen, listen bottom line, suspects like that that approach victims, because you're a victim. Your companion is a victim. He needs to be dealt with because if you don't stop people from doing this, well, right. where where is he going to draw the line? He'll they're not. Continue, the line. They're, they're, going not. they're going to the continue place. to do right. something, and, and somebody's going to gonna get hurt because they got away with it this time. They'll actually wind up putting their hands on somebody, spitting on somebody. I'm afraid that's going to happen. Uh, and the whole idea of this, you don't want that yeah. unwanted touching. I don't want somebody close to me like that. All right, absolutely. I mean, you know, I'm saying to myself, do I have a right to defend myself here at all? And the answer is no. If I hit him, I would have been charged. Absolutely would have been charged. I know I would have been. Well, you'd have been charged because of who you are. I'll tell you that right <laughs> no, now. No, but I, I would have been charged. I might not have been convicted, but they would have had to take me downtown. You're allowed to use force in instances like this to right. defuse the situation. Well, my umbrella was was my uh, weapon of choice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but you're allowed. The victim. No, I know. The victim is allowed to use the necessary force to defuse the situation. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if I defuse it or not, well, but I, I, I did. Tell it, you, you're under control because I'd have decked them. All right. And, and I, thought you, I thought you handled it well. All right. Thank you, Detective. I appreciate you coming in. Next on the rundown, Donald Trump very angry. That's